Kelly and Selvin. Part 2 Movie Review Having set the plot in motion in the first part, with Pony and Selvin, Part 2, Mani Ratnam dives right into the heart of the novel, the ill-fated romance between Crown Prince Aditha Karakalan Vikram and Nandini Ashwarya Rai Bachchan. PS2 begins with a prelude that captures the romance between these two characters when they were young, and without saying too much in the form of dialogues, the director shows us the blossoming of love between a prince and an orphan girl, and the heartache it leaves in the wake of them being separated by forces beyond their control. In fact, right until the climax, this doomed romance is what sustains the tension in this tale and drives the characters to make decisions that have far-reaching impact. Even when he realizes that an acceptance of an invitation to the Kadamber Palace, a place where his own chieftains plotted against him, could be a folly, Karakalan is unable to turn it down. For his sister, Princess Kunhavai, Trisha, the mystery around Nandini's lineage drives her actions. And the young prince Arulmazi Varman, Jayam Ravi, ends up fending off the Pandya rebels, who have sworn an oath to kill Karakalan, whose romance led to the murder of their king. Up until the intermission, the film continues with the brisk narration that we got in the latter half of the first film, proceeding more like a swashbuckler. We witness the daring attempts to murder Arulmazi, who is recovering from an illness at a monastery, and Vandiyathevan's Karthi efforts to foil them. We get a sizzling romantic scene between Vandiyathevan and Kunhavai, a truly heartwarming moment in a reunion of the siblings, and a thrilling pre-interval action sequence with a rousing A.R. Rahman background score that's a masterclass in shooting chaos while retaining spatial clarity. The latter half is more concerned with the fate of Karakalan, and Mani Ratnam fills the much-anticipated moment between Karakalan and Nandini with so much dread and pain that we even forget the rest of the characters for a brief while. Vikram and Ashwarya are terrific in these portions, delivering performances that are so naked and deeply heartfelt, filmed largely in close-ups by cinematographer Ravi Varman, and adding to the vulnerability of their characters. In fairness, the climactic portions are hugely impacted by this emotional high, as the events that follow a major character's death cannot match the suspense and the drama the narrative held until then. And given the serious nature of the proceedings, they have a rather somber tone, something we don't associate with period epics, especially in this post-Bahubali era. Unlike those films, which were about larger-than-life, imaginary heroes, Mani Ratnam hews closer to the spirit of Kalki's novels, a fictionalized account of historical personalities, largely focused on the interpersonal drama. The action might happen in a palace, but the grandeur comes mainly from the emotions of characters within its walls. Mani Ratnam seems to realize this too, and decides to have a war scene in the end to give viewers an instant adrenaline rush, but this portion lacks strong emotional grounding and stunning visual effects to truly leave us with a high. But the more underwhelming moment is the climax. Even in Kalki's book, we get a rather low-key ending, with one too many twists, but here, while the writers Mani Ratnam, Jayamohan and Kumaravel sensibly give us a more agreeable twist, they fail to pack a punch with the speech that Arulmazi delivers in the end while making the supreme sacrifice that makes him the titular hero of this sprawling epic.